Let me get started with a word of prayer. God, thank you for the time you've given tonight. We're praying that you uh, just bless our interaction. Help us to be encouraged as we open up your word together. Um, and allow this to be a chance for us to just simply grow to be people like you. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning we're starting a brand new series called Finding Truth. And, um, and it's because the world is, is full of people's opinions. Right? You can't go anywhere without hearing what someone believes about, about something. And what that causes you to, to hear is different opinions no matter where you go. I mean, a lot of times we can have different opinions from people in our same family, in our same house. You know, we, we hear differing viewpoints all the time about, about things. And because of that, it can be difficult for us to know, well, what is the real truth? What, like, what is the actual truth that I'm supposed to believe? And because of that, we have this tendency to just say, well, I'm just going to do what, whatever I think is right. Whatever, whatever makes, makes the most sense, whatever makes me feel good, but I'm going to do whatever I think is right is right. And really what the Bible lays out is this plan that, that God has for establishing and understanding what truth is. And, and the Bible basically says that God has a plan. He has a plan for you and your life. And his plan is designed to not only enhance your life, but enhance all the people's lives that interact with you. Like, that, that's the goal of, of following God's leading. You know, the Bible is our only, this is the only source of truth that, that we have. And what you see in Jesus' life is he gives us example after example for how we can walk in this truth. And this is what we're going to examine over the next few weeks, and it's going to look a little bit different, because one of the things that I really wanted to do, and I really, I really thought about it and prayed about it as we approach kind of a new teaching series, we still have, um, we still have a lot of people that haven't come back to church yet, and, and they haven't come back for a lot of reasons, um, and we want to simply be able to, to provide something for those who are still at home. And so we're going to do this series uh, through Right Now Media, which is a kind of like a video-based series. And one of the things that we're doing with that is we're sending out uh, a link on Sunday mornings for those at home. And if they click on the link, they can actually watch along with us. So basically, anyone that clicked on the link that we sent out this morning, it's going to be, they're going to be taken to a page that you're going to see here very shortly, and we're going to click watch the video, and everyone's going to be able to watch it together. And then we're posting kind of the discussion time after on, on YouTube, just so they can kind of feel a sense that they're still connected and still here. And so I really wanted to try and think of a way that we can include all of those. And so that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do this morning and for the next few weeks. This series is from Francis Chan. We've done a series with him before uh, because I really I really like how simple and practical he teaches. And I think it's uh, probably gonna be beneficial as he walks through this. And you're gonna see some different testimonies throughout the time too. So the key passage that, that he read from, let me read it again. It's Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Here's what I think that this, this passage does, this verse does. I, I believe it elevates the words of the Bible. I believe it just elevates the truth of the Bible. Um, and I think what God wants us to do is he wants us to understand the high importance in what is written here compared to what's stored in our own minds, in our own hearts, to the words that come out of our mouth. We like to think that we have the, the, the best ideas. We like to think 
that we are um, right about things. I heard someone say um, a couple years ago, this, this uh, and I never thought it, I never forgot it. Um, I don't think any of us are going to get to heaven and just get patted on the back by God and saying, congratulations, you were 100% right on everything that you believed in. You know, we're, we're, we're not who we think we are, but thankfully, God is. The, the God who we, we worship and serve, he wrote this, this book for us to understand who he is. You know, it's okay that we don't understand everything. It's okay that we don't know everything. I mean, just in, 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 my, in my time with the Lord this week, I, I had a moment where I was like, God, I don't understand this. I don't understand this aspect about, about who you are. I don't, I don't know what this, this means. And, and I wasn't asking him to, to audibly give me an answer. What I was declaring to God was, God, I'm thankful that you do. I'm thankful that you do understand and you know exactly how everything works because you've orchestrated everything. You know, something that, that Francis said that jumped out to me was that we need to start trusting the Bible more than we trust our own thoughts. And it can be really difficult to do that because everyone around us is living with the, the mindset that it's, it's okay to just simply do whatever you want. As long as you're not hurting anyone, it's okay for you to do whatever you want. I mean, look at the advertisements that you see. Look at the, the billboards that you pass. There, there's, so, there's so much language that speaks directly to this idea that it's okay for you to do whatever you want. Be who you are. Be your, yourself. And those sayings are, are okay to a point, all right? Because we are all unique. We are all created by God for a very special, specific purpose. But a lot of times what those things are communicating is this, is this belief that everyone has their own truth built inside of him, which is why he goes on to say time and time again, you are going to be lied to continually because everyone tends to trust their own thoughts more than God's thoughts. There are plenty of Christians that trust their own thoughts more than God's thoughts. So, of course, everyone that you see outside of Christianity, outside of the church, that doesn't care about God at all, of course they're going to care more about their thoughts than, than God's thoughts. And when that happens, you and I were lied to. And so that's what he means that we're going to be lied to our whole life. There's a verse at the end of the book of Judges. The people were living in chaos. They didn't care about doing um, what was right or good. And there's this, this verse that, that's a good summation of, of people in general, society in general. It says, and the people did what was right in their own eyes. It's kind of like this this call to say, here is the danger that's associated with living for yourself. It equals chaos. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. See, see, we as believers, we need to avoid that behavior. And I think, I think one of the ways to do that is by one more verse that I want to share. It's in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, and it says, it says this. It's about the Bible transforming you. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. I think, I think this passage helps us. It gives us some clues for how, how, can, we not, how can we avoid the lies that we're told? Like, like, how can we avoid some of those things? And I think it's the renewal of our mind, because when we renew our minds, we're, we're tapping into the mind of God. See, 
trans, a transformed and renewed mind is a mind that's in unison with God. And when our mind is in unison with God's mind, then we're understanding of the truth. What happens is we can hear something and be like, nope, that's a lie. Because I know the truth. I understand. God has given me the truth. So when people say that, 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 this, is, that this is true, I, I know that I don't have to believe them. Because I understand what the truth is. This is what's called discernment. When you hear that word discernment, it's you being able to intelligently decide what is right from what's wrong. And that is built up in us from how much we've gotten into God's word. Because this is the only source of truth. So the more of the Bible that we put into our hearts and our mind, the more we're going to understand what the truth is. Um, we're gonna, uh, we only have a few minutes left, but we are going to try and split up and get into some smaller groups to kind of have maybe some discussion here as we, we finish up. Um, I actually do have a handout. I don't, oh, I have it right here. Um, I have a handout. This has, you know, if we want, if we want to, to really dive in and understand how to transform our mind, it's about absorbing more of God's word. So that's what this is. This is just a simple sheet with um, a hand, like 10, 10 verses or so. And this is, they give you some suggestions of, of memorizing or just kind of placing these in different spots that you can see them occasionally. And so a big part of us transforming our mind is just simply inserting more Bible in our, in our life, just being introduced to the Bible more. And so that's what this is intended to do, okay? So... Grab that before you head out. But what we're going to do is we're going to split up into um, a few different groups. Um, Kendra's going to take the middle school girls. So middle school girls go to room four. Um, middle school guys, you're going to go with Randy to room six. And high school, you can kind of just hang out in here and just kind of gather up here in this front section. All right, so grab one of these on, on your way out and then head to wherever I just said and told you to head.